What up everybody? It's your neighborhood nerd. Back with another quick tip. If you're not getting good information from your nerd, I'd say find another nerd. If you want good info, consider subscribing to the channel and I'll give you all kinds of tips you can use to make all kinds of different music. There's so many ways to utilize the effects on the MPC X Live and Touch. You can put them on pads, you can put them on key groups, drum programs, audio tracks, submixes, and even the output. But I'm sure this has happened to you because it's happened to me. You've put together a banging sequence with effects and everything, and you duplicated it. And then when you went into the duplicated sequence and you changed some of the effects parameters, it screwed up your entire first sequence. So I'm gonna tell you one way, the Mod Boss way, how to address that situation. If you were around for Mod Boss episode number two, I wanna apologize. There are some problems with the YouTube editor. It's being reverted. There's been some confusion about the effects and how they work in your MPC X and MPC Live and Touch. Your effects are attached to your program and your pad. So you can see right here, that's your pad icon, that's your program icon, that's your channel. The word insert appears in your pad. In the, in the program tab, the, the word insert appears. If you go to your channel, there is no insert. What does that mean for your productions? That means that you can use a program, but if you use a program in a single project, your project is up here. So this is the name of your project. If you use this program anywhere in this project and you put an effect on that project uh, program, so I'm in the program field right now. If I put an effect on that, let's call it an air enhancer. Now, no matter where I use this program within this entire project, that is going to be attached to it. Even if I go to number 42, which is an unused uh, sequence, it doesn't matter. See, it's still attached. So how do you use this? There's several different ways you can do it. I'm going to show you one now. I'm just going to pull up something that I know will have an effect that we can hear. So a filter sweep. That's a filter sweep. Now I'm going to record a very simple four bar loop so that we can have something to hear. Okay. Now if I turn that on, now you'll hear what it does. Whether we like it or not, let's see. It's pretty aggressive for a effect. And let's just say that's cool. Like we like that for our intro, but then when we go to the next sequence, we don't want to have that. So I'm going to copy this sequence to sequence number two. And I'm going to call it nerd two. Now we have two sequences and both of them are gonna have that effect on it, but I only want the effect for the intro. And then I'm gonna go switch it to two. Okay, now we're in two and it's still going. So I wanna turn that off now. So I'm gonna turn that off. Now I'm back, right? But now if I go back to number one, it's gone. So now I've lost my intro. So, because it's attached to the program. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back to two and then I'm going to pull up the looper. I'm gonna hold shift and I'm gonna go to the looper. Now, right now, I only have one track recorded. So if you had multiple tracks, what you would do is you would solo so that we're only hearing just that one track. Then you would go to looper. Whoops, I don't know what that was. Now you're in the looper. So what you're gonna do, I also have a video done on the looper to make it used 
in a live situation. So if that's interesting to you, go check that out. It's called I Will Learn Something Looper. I'm gonna turn this from one and two into a resample. Now we're gonna hear and see the audio because it's sampling what is coming right out of the output. So whatever's coming out the output is gonna be recorded. So I'm gonna hit arm and then I'm gonna hit play. And remember, we turn the effect off. That's our, that's our loop. So I'm gonna go back. Actually, what we're gonna do is we're gonna export this first. I'm gonna call it drum three. So I'm going to keep that. Then I'm going to clear the looper. Then I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna take this off solo. Now, I'm gonna mute it. What we're gonna do is turn this into an audio track. Now we're gonna go to the audio settings. So that's where it's gonna place your sample. So now that I'm in an audio track, I'm gonna pull up the samples and I'm gonna pull up drum number three. Do it. Now, get rid of that eyeball. Now that's our entire sample. Open it back up, there's no effect. If you want to put a different effect, that's your option. Now we're in uh, sequence number one. I'm going to hit play. And then we're going to go transition into number two, and you'll hear what happens. There. And if you want to look at it, there it is. All you've done is you've transitioned your drum program into an audio clip that you're pulling into an audio track so that you can put whatever effects you want on it now. Don't let things get in your way. Find creative options and ways to get around things. I'll see you guys on the next one.